Good morning. It's uh, Wednesday, the 17th of February, uh, Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, a fa day of solemn fast uh, for the faithful um, to be broken with a light meal uh, late in the day. Uh, we begin uh, morning prayer uh, according to the 1928 prayer book on page six with the confession of sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us, therefore, humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Today on Ash Wednesday, we read the seven penitential psalms, three at morning prayer, three at evening prayer, and uh, the middle one, Psalm 51, at the penitential rite. And these, there's many psalms that speak about sin, but these psalms have been highlighted by the church from ancient times as teaching us how to respond with true repentance, acknowledging uh, what we've done as our own work, uh, acknowledging also the righteousness of God's judgment on it, um, uh, 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 confessing it with true uh, contrition, sorrow for sin, 
and a resolute desire to put it out of one's life, a plea for mercy, and a breakthrough to hope and joy. That's what true repentance is, and that's what we're being invited to exercise ourselves in on this Ash Wednesday and this season. Psalm 6 is the first one on page 348. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine indignation, neither chasten me in thy displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul also is sore troubled, but Lord, how long wilt thou punish me? Turn thee, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death no man remembereth thee, and who will give thee thanks in the pit? I am weary of my groaning. Every night wash I my bed and water my couch with my tears. My beauty is gone for very trouble and worn away because of all mine enemies. Away from me are ye that work iniquity. For the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my petition. The Lord will receive my prayer. All mine enemies shall be confounded and sore vexed. They shall be turned back and put to shame suddenly. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now the second of the penitential psalm, Psalm 32, on page 377, speaks of the happiness of those who confess. Blessed is he whose unrighteousness is forgiven, and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth no sin, and in whose spirit what there is no guile. For whilst I held my tongue, my bones consumed away through my daily complaining. For thy hand was heavy upon me day and night, and my moisture was like the drought in summer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine unrighteousness have I not hid. I said I will confess my sins unto the Lord. And so thou forgavest the wickedness of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly make his prayer unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely the great water floods shall not come nigh him. Thou art a place to hide me in. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will inform thee and teach thee in the way wherein thou shalt go. And I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not like the horse and mule, which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held with bit and bridle, else they will not obey thee. Great plagues remain for the ungodly, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord, mercy embraceth him on every side. Be glad, O ye righteous, and rejoice in the Lord, and be joyful, all ye that are true of heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now Psalm 38 on page 387. Put me not to rebuke, O Lord, in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy heavy displeasure. For thine arrow stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no health in my flesh because of thy displeasure. Neither is there any rest in my bones by reason of my sin. For my wickednesses are gone over my head, and are like a sore burden, too heavy for me to bear. My wounds stink and are corrupt through my foolishness. I am brought into so great trouble and misery that I go mourning all the day long. For my loins are filled with the sore disease, and there is no whole part in my body. I am feeble and sore smitten. I have roared for the very disquietness of my heart. Lord, thou knowest all my desire, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panteth, my strength hath failed me, and the light of mine eyes is gone from me. My lovers and my neighbors did stand looking upon my trouble, and my kinsmen stood afar off. They also that sought after my life laid snares for me, and they that went about to do me evil talked of wickedness and imagined deceit all the day long. As for me, I was like a deaf man and heard not, and as one that is dumb who doth not open his mouth, I became even as a man that heareth not, and in whose mouth are no reproofs. For thee, O Lord, have I put my trust. Thou shalt answer for me, O Lord my God. I have required that they, even mine enemies, should not triumph over me. 
For when my foot slipped, they rejoiced greatly against me. And I truly am set in the plague, and my heaviness is ever in my sight. For I will confess my wickedness and be sorry for my sin. But mine enemies live and are mighty, and they that hate me wrongfully are many in number. They also that reward evil for good are against me, because I follow the thing that good is. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, be not thou far from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Uh, on this Ash Wednesday, there are special readings, which of course are biblical teaching on uh, the manner on which we keep the fast. The first is the 58th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. And uh, here, um, both fasting and Sabbath keeping, practices required by the law of God, uh, the manner in which they have been conducted as purely external and formal exercises disconnected from ethical uh, uh, obligations um, and uh, in a spirit of uh, it seeks to um, uh, a spirit of self gratification. Uh, this comes under the prophet's censure. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, or finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Here endeth the first lesson. Uh, the Benedicite uh, on page, the second part on page 13. O oh, let the earth bless the Lord, yea, let it praise him and magnify him forever. 
O ye mountains and hills, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let Israel bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the 13th verse of the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark. And here we have a a teaching on Jesus' mission to sinners, in which we should count ourselves, I hope, and also his teaching on fasting. And as Jesus passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? But thy disciples fast not. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. Here endeth the second lesson. So our task today is indeed a practical one. It is indeed to abstain from food, uh, with the usual exceptions for those whose health requires it, or are engaged in uh, occupations uh, where it is indeed necessary, especially strenuous labor. Um, but for most of us, it is uh, a straightforward matter. Um, if we uh, to reduce quantity um, and uh, in the other weekdays of Lent to reduce the we don't need to be uh, indulging ourselves with rich food and drink and pleasures and amusements this is a time indeed as Isaiah said not for us to please ourselves but to seek uh, to please the Lord and uh, critical that our fasting indeed be accompanied by um, uh, a continual uh, acts of prayer, and indeed um, uh, the relief of those in need. Um, so we give thanks and praise uh, to God our Father for our salvation in Christ, as we say the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, 
and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in one faith, one Lord, let us commend ourselves and one another and the whole Church of God to the Father's watchful care. I bid your prayers for our country and its leadership, for peace, order, and good government, for our churches and the faithfulness of their witness and worship, for all those who suffer in mind, body, and estate. I think especially of those who are hard hit uh, by the... Uh, uh, effects of the pandemic, not only directly in terms of sickness, but also those who've lost livelihoods, education, opportunities uh, to worship, uh, and uh, uh, experienced isolation. And take a moment to think about any names, those in particular for whom we should pray. And also, I bid your prayers for those who have departed this life in Christ and do now rest in peace, that we may rise with them to glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, 
but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we conclude morning prayer, but on this day, I invite you to continue with me in the penitential office, which begins on page 60 in the prayer book. It begins with, um, we've already had three penitential psalms, 6, 32, and 38. We begin with the fourth and central penitential psalm, uh, the Psalm of David, Psalm 51. And we read this um, very much as an act of prayer. The rubrics instruct us to kneel, and though I'm not kneeling because the camera faces the way it does, um, let's uh, at least be kneeling in our hearts as we read this prayerfully. Have mercy upon me, O God, after thy great goodness. According to the multitude of thy mercies, do away mine offenses. Wash me throughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and clear when thou art judged. Behold, I was shapen in wickedness, and in sin hath my mother conceived me. But lo, thou requirest truth in the inward parts and shalt make me to understand wisdom secretly. Thou shalt purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Turn thy face from my sins, and put out all my misdeeds. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. O give me the comfort of thy help again, and establish me with thy free spirit. Then shall I teach thy ways unto the wicked, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou that art the God of my health, and my tongue shall sing of thy righteousness. Thou shalt open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall show thy praise. For thou desirest no sacrifice, else would I give it thee. But thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, shalt thou not despise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, save thy servants that put their trust in thee. Send unto them help from above, and ever more mightily defend them. Help us, O God our Savior, and for the glory of thy name deliver us. Be merciful to us sinners for thy name's sake. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee, mercifully hear our prayers, and spare all those who confess their sins unto thee that they whose consciences by sin are accused, by thy merciful pardon, may be absolved. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O most mighty God and merciful Father, who hast compassion upon all men, and who wouldest not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may, should turn from his sin and be saved, mercifully forgive us our trespasses, receive and comfort us who are grieved and wearied with the burden of our sins, Thy property is always to have mercy, to thee only it appertaineth to forgive sins. Spare us therefore, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed. Enter not into judgment with thy servants, but so turn thine anger from us, who meekly acknowledge our transgressions and truly repent us of our faults. And so make haste to help us in this world, that we may ever live with thee in the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Turn thou us, O good Lord, and so shall we be turned. Be favorable, O Lord, be favorable to thy people who turn to thee in weeping, fasting, and praying. For thou art a merciful God, full of compassion, long-suffering, and of great pity. Thou sparest when we deserve punishment, and in thy wrath thinkest upon mercy. Spare thy people, good Lord, spare them, and let not thine heritage be brought to confusion. Hear us, O Lord, for thy mercy is great, and after the multitude of thy mercies look upon us, through the merits and mediation of thy blessed Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, whose nature and property is ever to have mercy and to forgive, receive our humble petitions, and though we be tied and bound with the chain of our sins, yet let the pitifulness of thy great mercy loose us for the honor of Jesus Christ, our mediator and advocate. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace, both now and evermore. Amen. May the good Lord order this day and its doings in his peace.